Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. In my last class, I talked about the semaphores. We started uh, the discussion on semaphores. So the first point is. Uh, Uh, the broad topic that we are discussing is how to deal with data access synchronization problems when we have got a shared resource and multiple processes are uh, competing or trying to access that resource <coughs> they want to both read and write on that on that uh, on that particular resource so in such a case if there is no access control or uh, synchronization uh, primitives then it might lead to inconsistency or race condition so to avoid that there are multiple approaches uh, uh, multiple approaches are there to resolve that particular problem that issue one was uh, algorithmic approach purely using logic that we have discussed and we found that the lamport's baker algorithm is capable of solving the problem of shared access when multiple n number of processes are involved and it is uh, fairly simple to verify also that all the basic four conditions are satisfied but uh, when there are more complex problems <clears throat> the ones that uh, we will discuss some of them in today's class we encounter those problems then uh, trying to come up with a uh, solution purely using logic it becomes uh, very challenging and there is another alternative to deal with it that is to use semaphores and the semaphores typically Uh, required support from the operating system itself and in the previous case there was no operating system no compiler support required so in the semaphores we took this uh, analogy of a telephone booth where the booth was uh, i mean the phone handset was the resource unit and so this uh, phone handset is is a resource unit and the component Uh, components of the arrangement to ensure fair and mutual exclusive access to that when multiple customers are coming is is the light and uh, sofa both so that is what we found and initially when the uh, booth owner opens the shop in the early morning he just switches on the light that is to signify that the resource is available so uh, these are the two uh basic operations through which a uh, incoming customer if it executes wait process uh, uh, wait operation he can uh, i mean he must execute the wait operation before he enters and access the shared resource or the phone handset and once he completes using it then he executes the signal operation to ensure that others who are waiting they can be awakened or it will he will switch on the light that's all and the equivalent of that in terms of the computational construct semaphore is it will have a it will have an integer variable which will correspond to the light it will have the queue which will correspond to the sofa that in that example that we have considered and uh, s is just an instance of the of the semaphore uh, abstract data type so as you can see here semaphore actually consists of these two members and also these two operations so together we can define a semaphore as an abstract data type and this is an instance of that abstract data type s and this is how we initialize s dot count equals to 1 means the it signifies that the resource is available and because in this particular example we have got just one resource unit indicating the resource available is 1 so this semaphore this example of the semaphore is this is an example of binary semaphore and we just consider the generalization where we had uh, three resource units three handsets so the arrangement to ensure access mutual exclusive access is lights and sofa but we have now uh, three lights and a sofa so that is the case and 
initial state is all the lights should be switched on signifying all the resources are available in the start of the day so here also the same thing as you can see that the semaphore members are exactly the same this is an instance the only change that we have is the initialization sorry is the initialization which says that instead of one now you have got three resource units for use of the customers okay and here again uh, the only change is instead of checking whether the light is on now you have got you have to check whether some lights are on this is this part is a bit of change and you switch off any one of the lights so you just press the button it will it will be switching on <coughs> switching off one of the light and here also switch on one light it is uh, instead of setting it to one the analogy will be it will be s dot count plus plus and in this case just setting it to zero instead of that you decrement one resource unit so compared to the previous one s dot count equals to zero and s dot count equals to one you have got s dot count minus minus s dot count plus plus and the way it is handling multiple resource units uh, this type of semaphores we call it as general or counting semaphores so they can take values more than one to signify more than one resource unit available so just to summarize so semaphore is an abstract data type which is used to control access to the common common resource by multiple processes in a multitasking operating system and it was proposed by dijkstra in 1963 and that was the first implementation of a uh, multi programming operating system which name was called the and from there i mean taking inspirations from that this unix types uh, operating systems were started design and people started designing those so it was long back when uh, this dijkstra proposed it and it is uh, still in use the basic concept of semaphores so semaphores if i say what it consists of it consists of a non negative non negative integer variable and also a queue to track the or to store the waiting processes and the important point is this p and v or the wait and signal whatever way we refer to the operations these two are atomic or indivisible in the sense no interrupt can occur or the process cannot be preempted while it is performing any process it is performing p or v operations on a particular semaphore variable so these are special instructions in the sense they are atomic in nature even though as we know as we found that each of them consist of multiple uh, micro steps or multiple uh, basic steps at the same time these operations can be performed only on semaphore variables semaphore instances and no other variables uh, apart from that so you cannot uh, use p or v in a on a simple integer variable that is not possible okay so that is a speciality of these two operations and the atomicity of the operations is ensured by the operating system we'll we'll look into it later that how it exactly ensures the atomicity of the execution of uh, execution of p and v operation okay and the semaphore the value it signifies the number of resource units currently available so this part we we already discussed so the strong semaphore defines uh, the order in which the waiting process will be removed and the uh, weak semaphore will not have the explicit uh, way to mention it so there are several classical problems which we uh, try to uh, model and we try to exercise uh, uh, how semaphores can be used uh, to solve those problems to get a feel of the uh, of the approach that you make in the real life problems and these problems are inspired and also they have got a lot of analogy with uh, many of the real life scenarios uh, as you can see but these are stated in a more, more story like fashion the producer consumer the sleeping barber the reader writer the dining philosopher cigarette smoker problem narrow beach problem like this so we'll try to look into at least uh, three or four of these problems uh, and using semaphores we'll try to find out the solutions to it so the first problem 
so i think uh, till this point this is this was just a recap of the previous one so we, we start uh, so our objective will be uh, to deal with the first two problems producer consumer and sleeping barber let's see if we have uh, if the time permits okay so the producer consumer problem it says that there is a there are a set of producers and a set of consumers okay so one set of producers uh, one set of processes called producers and one set of processes called consumers and they communicate using a finite buffer so as you know that the producer processes so if these are the producer processes okay p1 p2 p3 pn so these producer processes are going to produce something and this pro they, they may produce anything any any uh, it may be a message it can be a file it can be some other entity which this consumer processes will try to consume or they will just use it so they will produce something and they will consume that and this is the buffer area where these are stored and this buffer has got finite number of slots okay so maybe this is n number of slots are there so whenever they produce something they will try to grab a free slot this producer the objective is this producers will try to find out a free slot say this slot is available i mean this is occupied this is occupied this is occupied so if some producer say this producer produces something some item it will try to put that pro uh, product or that particular item into the next free slot that is this one so you, if you can think of so this can be this buffer can be maintained as if it is a circular queue okay so this probably will be the uh, in of the producer so this may be pointed by some integer variable in that where a new item produced by any producer can be kept and maybe uh, these consumers when they need to consume some in, uh, information or some message or some item of this type it will try to look for some produced items and maybe this is the pointer i mean this is the out integer index which points to the uh, next item to be consumed so they will be consumed in the order they have been produced like that okay so once this has been consumed by this process so this will be made free okay so this will be made free and then this out will be pointing to this like this so it will be like so this will be made free and this will be pointing to this okay so in that way it will go on and the number of producers and the number of consumers there is no limit to it so there can be any number of producers any number of consumers but we assume that the buffer size is finite the buffer has got say n number of entries n or whatever 10 or 20 or 50 entries so this is the situation and here so what is the shared resource here what is the resource that all the processes the con consumers and the producers are sharing hello the buffer the buffer uh, a bit louder the buffer right so buffer is a shared resource and what are the basic conditions that uh, actually impose the challenge when the consumers say the, the consumers they have uh, so they are or maybe the producers you can say the producers so this producer has produced something this producer has produced something and they want to just put it here okay but if it if they find that all of these buffer slots are occupied then they have to wait right so these producers need to wait if they find that all these buffer slots are occupied or they are full and at the same time the consumers when they try to consume something they are all you know eager to uh, they are hungry and they want to consume these items produced by the producers they need to wait if they find that all these slots are empty so that is the case so the producers must wait for the consumer to consume something if the buffer is full 
and the consumers must wait for the producers to produce something if the buffer is empty so that is why they need to wait uh, both parties or uh, both the types of processes may need to wait at some time at some point of times even though there are multiple slots in the buffer that is available okay and there can be any number of producer consumers and producers can produce this is an important point to note the producer can produce one resource unit at a time one producer can produce one resource unit at a time or you can write a producer can produce and a consumer can consume one resource unit at a time so when you have your chance you cannot uh, pick up two items at, at the same time that is not possible or the producer cannot bring two items and place it so this is not possible and each buffer slot so this is the resource type so this whole buffer is a resource type and the resource units are the number of slots that is available okay so items should be consumed in the same order in which they are produced and a typical computational example can be that these producers are certain processes which are producing files and the consumers are printer demands i mean the background um, processes background uh, background printer pro printing process which will try to grab one file and it will uh, produce a print out of that so say for example in the lab we have got say five printers who are catering to the need of the students and the faculties and from my and these are all network printers so from from our from my rooms uh, we just fire printouts anybody can fire printouts from my office or from my room and uh, the printer and it will be then uh, uh, so we are the considered to be the producers once we produce a file now the out of several printers that are available so no matter which printer so i want just a print out so each printing process if it is complete it will seek for another file to print like that so it is something like so this buffer is basically uh, uh, a space where the files produced by different uh, the staff and the faculty and the students of the department produces files for print outs and maybe sometimes you have to pay for it so so the thing is uh, if i have dedicated my printer so i i would so if i can print more or say more number of pages maybe i charge something from from, from that particular person so that kind of mechanism can always be there so in a typical pool of printers and uh, printing like this uh, the, so that can be one analogy of this producer consumer problem so now let's see that how uh, this basic requirement or uh, this scenario computing scenario or, or this particular scenario can be uh, we, we can ensure that it uh, it gets executed without any race condition so here uh, let us assume that you have this particular so again we take some physical analogy that this is a <clears throat> fast food center and this is the buffer so this is a table which has got slots where these producers these are the chefs and these are the customers these are the consumers okay so in a shop the shop owner uh, he just made the arrangement and he has left and he knows that all the customers and the chefs that he has employed they will behave properly and he will have his business running without him being physically present there okay so here these producers are you know, producing the the noodles here and they are ready to uh, you know drop it there and the more you can produce the more you earn basically so that can be the rule so these are the these are the shapes and these are the customers who come and want to uh, who actually want to consume something okay now the point is this is a critical area or critical resource area you can think of and it has got finite number of resources so my point is we want to have some uh, light and sofa arrangements as like the previous one and we'll get back to the solution later on so how many lighting arrangements should be there 
and where should we place the right lights now are you getting the problem where should i place the lights and how many lights should be there first of all how many uh, resource units are here in this case in this problem hello if we consider the only the buffer then it is one agar if we consider slots then maybe multiple hmm a bit louder so the thing is you say that if it is one or two so i already mentioned that what is the resource type buffer is the resource type and what is the resource unit there is a distinction between resource unit and resource type okay so the printer is a resource type and the each printer is considered to be a resource unit so in this case what happens in this case uh, this slot each and every slot is a resource unit right because that is where a producer a free a free slot a producer wants and the empty uh, uh, and and a full slot or a occupied slot a customer wants right so how many resources are there how many resource units are there here in this example in this figure in this figure five five resource units so how many semaphores or how many lights do you want to have to make it secure the access to it five but uh, this is the queue so we only need one uh, two per full and empty we don't care about the order you don't care about the order of what things come and what see, things go see see the point is there is some in and out so in and out need to be preserved so who is going to um, uh, look into the in the producers are going to look into the in they are going to access the in and the out is to be accessed by the consumers or the customers right yes sir only two lights so how many do you think are required two lights will be enough two will two will be uh, will two do you think two will be enough others any, any other answer okay i mean i got your answer but let us see that if others do have uh, some other students some of your friends do have other answer or no do you think a single semaphore which controls in and the and another single semaphore which controls out is good enough hello hello are there any other uh, uh, some different answers here see if we have got multiple resource units the simple thing is you should put a general semaphore i mean let us uh, first start with the simple thing then we can argue that why we don't end up with a single semaphore in this case if you got multiple units like multiple phone booths uh, 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 multiple handsets phone handsets in the booth we can think of multiple lights to uh, ensure, uh, to just uh, show that okay they are available or not right hello yes sir yes sir so in that case i mean i'll come to the uh, that what he suggested but let, let me just so if i have so how many lights should i have five lights because i have got five resource yes, unit hello so do you think that just five lights will be good enough to control access uh, to uh, to provide control access to the both the producers and consumers do the meaning interpretation of the light same for both both parties no sir when it and yes, sir five will be enough if off then empty that part is empty no you see sir, the, the point is the lights you always um, so the basic concept says that when the lights are glowing means it is a resource unit that is available right so now if you want to have just five lights so five lights glowing means what will be the interpretation for you what do you think what interpretation should you make it the producer will produce when the light is on and the consumers can consume that slot if the light is off no that, that is the, so the 
on but, the light and yes i got your point but you see the basic definition or the basic concept of semaphore says that in the p operation so you can perform what you can perform a p operation and the v operation on the light right so p operation says what it just checks whether the light is glowing or not so here the point is if you have got just five lights if the if the three lights are on if your interpretation says that three lights on means three slots what three lot three slots are available is that what you mean if yes. three lights on means three slots available three buffer slots available here yes so that means this availability is a resource to the producers however for the customers what is the resource availability Th those which are on or off right so two and you cannot you don't have any provisions to uh, uh, you know uh, subtract something from this so e within the p operation do you have any such mechanisms mm -hmm. to know that how many are off and how many on like that you can just see that how many are on right yes, so just having that uh, those five bulbs and three are on how the consumers know that how many are off do they come to know no. are you getting my point so you know that is but because you are not going to write any additional code in the p operation right okay sir. so although it seems to be very trivial but the thing is my interpretation free is a resource to me and full is a resource to you and if this happens that both of us check and uh, you know uh, um, uh, we we act just using one operation p for which glowing means available so you really cannot do it by just having five lights for which will satisfy both the parties are you getting this point yes sir so this is a very simple thing but try to understand the the scenario and try to get back to the basics of uh, semaphores so in the semaphore p has been written by the the p whatever the logic in the p the operation p has been written prior by the os designers you, you cannot temper it you cannot make any changes to it and v also and the p says if it is glowing then you are free to use it by decrementing its count but p will never give you the information of how many are at present busy it is not possible so to uh, to to know that it is uh, you know you have that information probably you should have another pool of five lights so the blue lights glowing means this is so uh, uh, the resources or some full buffers are there red lights glowing means then some free buffers slots are there is that fine but they should be complementary so if there are three three red lights glowing you should know that two blue lights should be glowing and vice versa is that okay yes sir so first thing is we have got five resource units five slots now five slots the simple intuition okay let us put up general semaphore that's all now if you have got a single general semaphore and so this this particular red lights we can call it as in our sorry i mean okay let me write the blue one in our what we interpret it as in our full right so blue are in our full if it is full it is a resource to the consumers and this red one what it means what this red one means in our empty, empty. okay so in our empty means these red lights and this in our full means this so this is up uh, both of these are general semaphores so they can take values up to n in this case capital n and they can values uh, they can take values up to zero so if none of them are full zero none of them are empty it is zero like that and we know that uh, we have to adjust accordingly so that when this is three this is two this is one this is four like this so now uh, so now you see already there are several producers uh, those who have gathered here so if you allow all of them to enter here they will start fighting right because there is a single in and single out i mean uh, because they will be operating on the in pointer so if you allow them to enter they will jump on to the in so to make sure that the in is not 
the this in index the in the this index which controls the in pointer is not accessed by multiple producers who are ready to uh, drop their items what we should do now we should have some control uh, access control before they can enter here what should i do now got my point place a bulb there sir so we place a bulb here okay so this bulb is something like a single bulb is enough the single bulb means so it will allow one by one the entry here so because there is no point of having and and if you say that okay these are see these buffers are all these buffers are all full say for example these buffers are all full and so many producers are there so if one producer enters here and he finds that the buffers are full so there is no point of allowing other producers also to enter here right because they will anyway be waiting and there is no point of uh, crowding here inside right so the thing is there should, there is a entry buff, uh, entry bulb here and there is a entry bulb here and let us call this entry bulb so this is just a and what is uh, what it signifies it just signifies the or controls the entry or exit you know towards it so it controls uh, it ensures that the in pointer here will be operated by uh, will be accessed by one producer at a time and this con uh, ensures that the out pointer will be operated by one consumer at a time okay so this will be considered so uh, the one bulb is good enough so we call it as a binary semaphore and let us call uh, this binary semaphore as mute x so or mute p say for example this is mute p and this is mute this is called mute c okay so now because there is a bulb so there will be a sofa here and because there is so corresponding to this uh, blue one okay let me draw it here so there will be a sofa here associated with this bulb there is a sofa associated with this bulb and there will be corresponding to this red pool of bulbs this general semaphore you should have a sofa here okay so you can think of a there is a seating arrangement here and corresponding to this blue one also you should have a seating arrangement here okay is that fine sir are we letting only one at a time yes we are we are letting only at a time and we will write the procedure in such a way that it will ensure that the one producer at a time can enter into that arena and one consumer will enter at an arena because if one one see one consumer enters and he finds that uh, none of these lights are glowing the blue lights are glowing means all the slots are empty so definitely that that person will sit here that consumer, that customer so do you think that other customers need to enter there and uh, create a uh, and uh, you know have a mess inside is that required sir but in case more than one are empty uh, we can uh, allow concurrent access where we no no allow. you see the point is we can allow concurrent access but the thing is you know that it will be consumed in a fifa order right so it will be the out pointer so out pointer is just one so if the out pointer so although you know that so out pointer is one so the thing is then both of us enter there is one out pointer so how i know that who will be that who will be taking the grabbing the first out i mean the the first one there are three units available and two of us entered so then there will be a, again a chaos then probably we will get hold of the same out pointer and both will try to you know snatch the same uh, slot the item in the same slot getting the point because it says that yes, it should sir. strict fifo fifo order so and let the one sir. person grab it let him come uh, exit and then i'll go and exit that's all is that point because because you see that there are you find a lot of uh, lot of slots are uh, full lot of plates are full but if you allow two persons then uh, then he says that i'll be taking that one and you might also say that i'll be taking that one although the other one there is another uh, uh, you know occupied slot by the side of it so how you make sure that you will be taking the right one uh, and i will be taking the left hand one 
can you can you differentiate it's not possible then again there will be a chaos even though there are multiple items ready to be consumed got the point yes sir so is there any other question so i'll proceed so the thing is here before you enter what you should have so before you enter here so i think so before you enter here so you should have what so there will be a switch here it should be connected to it and this switch will be uh, performing p operation here right for performing the p operation means it will be switching it off if it is glowing and after you enter here after a producer enters here he what he should do here he should perform what operation on this semaphore another p so there will be another p switch available which connects to this one so another p another p switch corresponding to this one and when he has consumed say for example there are resources there are some lights glowing and he has actually consumed instead of sitting in the sofa here so while he leaves what he does while leaving leaving what he does this entry light is still off right but before he while he leaves he should switch it on right so there should be a there should be what type of switch here before the producer who was inside was about to leave he should signal he should glow the light or he should bell uh, ring the buzzer uh, the bell right so what is the operation called v the v operation right a v switch you can uh, think of physically but before he does that what he need to make sure that it may happen that all the slots are where all the slots were empty and this producer was the first producer who has produced some item here and because of that it may happen that one particular customer is sitting here and he is basically sleeping because it was also a uh, it was also a semaphore so before he leaves what he make, need to make sure what he need to make sure what kind of switch he should uh, press here p hmm we another p should be pressed no? hmm another p should be pressed so that uh, it is available no p means what so what you are trying to do you have consumed some resource uh, so you have produced the producer has produced some resource unit to be consumed by the consumer right yes sir so what you should do here and if somebody is sleeping here you should alert or if all the lights are off you should switch on the light so what warning means what type of operation what type of switch you should have to switch it on or to alert a waiting person sir v it should be v are you, are you getting my point so before you leave you have to switch on the light in the other side if all are off okay so if all are off then you have to switch on the light or it will be awakening one particular customer if there are three lights which were on blue lights once you have produced something you have to switch on one more light it will be incremented by four so basically this is the signal operation to increment verogen right is that fine till this point yes. hello yes sir fine so now you find so this will be the, again the similar so here before they enter they will have what operation here this consumers also they will have a p switch here if it was glowing they will switch it off and they will enter here and here they will have what kind of switch here another p switch operating on this general semaphore right now if all the lights are off they will they will wait here if some of the lights are on they will switch it off and they will consume it and before they leave they will have two switches to operate one switch that goes to this one what is that that switch this will be a v sir it will be a v to the nrmt general semaphore and there will be another v that is meant for signaling the entry of the customers here right before he leaves because he has successfully comp uh, 
consumed something, he has got that item and he's happy and he's going to leave and allow others to also enter one by one. Is that fine? So the only thing is uh, when you make this arrangement, you have to make something here and you have to make some connection with this also. Okay, because if if you know that uh, somebody is here waiting, so instead of switching on the light, you basically ring the bell. So the arrangement, so you just press a single physical bell, uh, sorry, switch, and the switch will have some arrangements that it will, if it, if, so uh, if somebody is sitting here, you can have a pressure sensor there. So if you know that somebody is there, it will, you know, vibrate that chair or something, it will alert that person. Otherwise, it will switch on the light. And here the same thing happens here. So we can think of physically having such an arrangement which will make sure that this uh, this whole semaphore type uh, arrangement actually works in a physical situation also. So you can have a fast food center which operates using these principles, right? So now what will be the code that we can write? So producer and this is a consumer code. So producer, which producer it is? Say the IAT producer, and the, and this is a JAT consumer. So this holds for all the for all I. This holds, and this for all J it holds. For all the consumers, the same logic holds, right? So what is the logic here? So here, what what do they do? So the producer produce some item. They produce some item M. Okay, and what is M? This is of message type. So they are producing some messages <clears throat> or say they are, they are producing noodles, plates of noodles. Okay, so this is producer. Then what is the first, first operation that it performs? It performs a P operation on which particular semaphore? A producer, we are talking about these red ones. So what is the first operation it performs? P on mute key. P of? Mute key. Mute, P. Then after that, he's in inside either it either that producer waits here if somebody is already there inside then the light will be off it will be it will be waiting in the sofa here if that is not the case he will be simply inside like sorry he will be simply inside here so being inside what is the next operation for this producer p of nrmt nrmt once this is there so either he may he may have to wait here also if he finds that all the lights are off you can recall that uh, general semaphore uh, operation p or wait okay you can recall those steps that we discussed last in the last class and even in this class so if he's he had skipped this step also this wait step that means he is having some resource to consume so what you will do now resource to con resource to consume means he basically will drop the message in the buffer pointed by in right is that fine and then what next it will increment in so this basically buffer can be considered to be a circular queue so what will be the increment operation in 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 equals in plus one then circular buffer mod 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 of n when is the size of the n is the size of buffer right so after doing that what you need to do he need to deal with these two steps so first which one you do if he presses so he need to uh, perform some v operations right so two v operations it performs so which v, v operation should perform first nr full nr full because if he presses uh, if he uh, performs nr mute p then he is out of, out of that uh, arena without so that that will take him outside basically at the same time so he should perform uh, he should perform nr nr full and after that he will perform so th this part is done then he will come to this point and will press the switch this v switch associated with mute p right is that fine?
Hello. Yes, sir. Is that okay? And uh, if he wants to produce another item now, what he will do? He will just keep on repeating that step. So while one, so he'll keep on repeating like this. Okay. <coughs> and what these consumers will do? <coughs> So we'll have again a message M. <coughs> so what are the steps that these uh, these consumers or customers will follow? They will perform. It's just simple one. So P of what? P of mute C. Hmm? Mute C. Mute C. Then it will. So once they are inside, they will perform uh, P of P of an apple. This one. In our full, then once they are through that without waiting, that means definitely some resources are available, some lives are growing, so they are here. So what they do, they need to do, they will need to consume. So they will copy the contents of buffer out, right? And they will update out as out plus one mode of n. Is that fine? What next? Plus one or minus one? Huh? Out minus one more than. No, no, we are just incrementing, no? So Cir circular queue. It's a circular queue. We are implementing as a circular queue. Is that okay? Sir, but we are consuming, no? Hmm? We are consuming that message. So. Uh, I should uh, delete or yeah, DQ that. Uh, that, no, no, see, that initially, thing. both in and out are zero. So when you produce something, so this will be incremented. This will remain like that. Hmm. Okay. So, so it will just so they keep on incrementing uh, monotonically, and you uh, when, when they are going out of bound, you just bring them to zero like that. So that is what circular queue is. Sir, and who takes care of this? Uh, if the queue is, uh, we are not overwriting something. No, we are not, not overwriting. It is taken care of by this operation itself. Out is always bound between zero to n minus one, both in and out. <clears throat> is that fine or? Still, you have doubts in this because how how you know that they are not uh, they are not overwritten and all this? It's taken care of by the semaphores here. One thing is that you you cannot generate a, a value of out and in which is greater than or equal to n. It will always be in between zero to n minus one, and that you so are not. Uh, it will come back again to zero. So who takes care of that, sir? Now it will it will be zero, but that zero will be so even though it comes back, say even if it is zero, but if you find that so say for example the producers are producing all they have produced all the five items right, and after the fifth item, this uh, uh, sorry these producers so the in has been pointing to again zero right. Say the so there are no consumers now. The producers are keep on producing the items, all the five items. Now in has been in is now pointing to again zero, zero one two three four, and now it is pointing to zero, which is already holding something. This is the situation that you want, right? You are asking. Yes, sir. That. Now you see. So if this happens, what will be the status of this? Uh, what will be the status of this uh, red semaphore? Uh, red oh, lights. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Red lights will be all off. So although even though this in is pointing to zero again, which is actually not free, this will be signified by the red pool of lights. They will be all off. So even though a producer comes and he finds that the in is pointing to zero, he will not be surely do not be dropping their his item there because the lights are off. Sir, so he'll come in and wait. Yeah, that is what I mean. So thing is there. So first of all, this in and out will never. Take values beyond zero to n minus one. That's first thing. And even though in is pointing to a slot which is already 
having some items that might happen this will not be consumed uh, i mean they, they, this will not be overwritten because in that case all the red lights will be off and that will force a producer to wait till that is consumed and when and where from it will be consumed it will be consumed from that point itself and that will make sure that the out is also pointing to that so when the out gets uh, out uh, is consumed from that point out will be now one and the in the producer will produce in the in that is zero it will go on like this is that clear yes sir any other questions so what will be the next steps now before the blue uh, before this consumer leave there will be two view operations first which operation you perform you have to you have to uh, basically signal the waiting NRMT, sir. producers right so it will be nrmt and then finally before you leave you you basically write uh, mute c <coughs> and if you want to uh, if you are too hungry you are want to uh, consume more and more items then you have to again try once so it's just like you can consume only one at a time okay you have to go back and again follow the same rule and in fact this can be physically implemented also you can so when you are um, so it is your turn so you know that you can see your item so if you drop the exact amount so if it is say Uh, 100 rupees. You put 100 rupees coin. It will be scanned, okay? Or you have got some cash card. You pay through that, and it will be, you know, it will uh, release that lock. I mean, I mean, lock means it is. It will release that, um, and you can take that, take that packet away with you. So it can be a completely automated system, uh, which is inspired from the semaphore, and a fast food uh, shop can really work like this, which is having multiple. Uh, shapes and multiple customers also are allowed so th this can be indeed a uh, good example to implement also physically so how many sima forts are here in this case how many sima forts are there so all the sima forts should be shares shared sima four so one is nr full then shared sima four so how many sima forts are there How many? Four are there. NR full. Four are there. NR full. NR empty, and then shared. Sima four. Mute P. Shared sima four. Mute C. Right, but sima fours we all know that they need to be initialized because you cannot leave them as blank. So this general sima fours, what will be their initialization? and this final sima force what will be the initialization think of the situation when the shop is just opened in the early morning so how many full will be there the shop just now is open how many buffer slots will be full zero hmm? zero sir it will be zero so it will be full zero means all the blue lights will be off just the shop opened and you you, you the customer you came you have to wait In our empty, five, five. It will be five in this case, or n, whatever. All are empty. Uh, now uh, mute P and mute C. These are entry and exit semaphores. So it's basically the lights uh, in the entry of both consumers and the producers. What should be the status of that? Zero zero. Hmm. Zero zero. If it is zero, then what, what will happen? So. So you just open the door and you lock. Uh, you just open the shop and lock the entry door. It is something like that, right? Oh, maybe one one. So you are not. So you open the door, but you, you know, you basically locked your main entry, entry gate, uh, and you expect people will. So they should be. So light should be on. So lights on means it basically signifies that the shop is on, open. So what should be their status? One one right? Because uh, we know that even though you enter, you have to wait. The consumer, the first consumer, need to wait. But the first producer, if it enters, he can simply put his item. So let let both of these to be on. Because the only way to signal that to switch it on is inside the shop. 
and if somebody is not allowed to get inside how can it be switched on okay so you have to initialize it to on got the point hello yes sir sir but uh, don't we want concurrent to customer two three customers to come so that uh, we can have food because customers will take time eating their food see the point is it is uh, take away because oh. this is typically a corona situation is take away so have your food and <laughs> leave and you uh, and you don't allow uh, inside the shop multiple customers because it is you, you will fail to ensure social distancing but outside the shop there are plenty of space and you can ensure they are at least few feet apart sitting and relaxing sir okay. don't we need to maintain a queue for this waiting people outside i have already mentioned so in the the sofa is actually maintaining a queue so they they are well de well defined so there is a rule so it's a queue that is defined in the in the back end in, in the semaphore construct is it's a queue and that queue is the basically the sofa so they they form they form actually a queue but in the queue they are not alert and waiting outside so they are basically sleeping and relaxing so if you think of the situation they are basically uh, the they are waiting in a fifo queue the sir, sofa sir, is a there FIFO. are four sofas yes there are four sofas two are outside and two are inside and this inner ones are just uh, for one person yes inner ones you have got enough space but you know this is just for having one person so what we are not defining is we are not defining the size of the queue that's that's a case yes in no way in, in the sima 4 you don't define the size of the queue so whatever you have to put you have to put in terms of the number of uh, that count value that you basically tune the sofa is a sofa so no matter how you manage it you, you allow just one person to be there you have allowed multiple persons to be there it's up to you so it's basically it, it is a sitting arrangement you can think of because in any case a physical sofa will have some uh, limits that i understand so in that case you can say it's a sitting arrangement okay so it should not be misunderstood that the sofa is having a finite uh, accommodation to accommodate waiting persons or waiting processes it's not the case is that fine okay sir this is what it means so i just put it in a nice uh, you know tight form that is what all that we have discussed okay so there can be few modifications of your queries what, can we just get uh, can we just maintain a single general general semaphore instead of just instead of two general semaphores in our full nmp we have already answered this question right yes sir yes sir in the very beginning uh there was a case like why don't we have only a pool of five five bulbs five lights because it cannot satisfy both parties both producers and consumers simultaneously the way it is interpreted right so that are you convinced with the first answer yes sir others uh, other students is that fine now can we remove the mutex and uh, p mutex and c mutex the entry semaphores completely and just have two general semaphores this what will be the answer for this i mean what do you think about this one so just remove the entry and exit semaphores no, this also the answer so what is going to happen if we do so they will hide in and hide out chaos sir a uh, chaos means they will they will enter and so the in the in is in is not protected right so now if there are multiple lights glowing you see if there are multiple blue lights glowing and if multiple customers are allowed say three blue lights are glowing and two customers are allowed inside so both the customers will fight on a single out because through the out they are consuming so they will grab the same out and they will start fighting with each other that the logic says that i am enter i have entered light is on and i should be grabbing the one pointed by out and he also has the same logic and they will start fighting even though they know that two other plates are still there i mean two, uh, two other packets are full 
but then how to say that you okay you take this and you take this nobody is there to you know resolve that dispute and it will be a problem got the point hello yes sir what is the last case the variation of the problem what changes need to be made when the buffer has finite slots uh, sorry infinite slots when you have got infinite number of slots so do you need to uh, do you have the provision to reduce the number of uh, semaphores or what will be the changes to be made mm -hmm. hello if the size of the buffer is infinite then what is the change we don't need then an r pool do you think so we don't need nr full why so if none of them are full all are empty yes sir no so, the queue cannot be full so why do we need means which one the queue no no see there are so the thing is there so are infinite number of yeah, the producer don't need to check the internal conditions you know and the internal conditions label is nr empty i guess or nr full see uh, the point is no matter where you are see initially will be operating in this part right at some point of time you will be operating in this part of this is infinite infinite buffer so the thing is in and out both are getting incremented both are getting incremented but there is no limit they are incremented infinitely that's all but at some point of time this is an empty buffer empty buffer both in and out are pointing to it that is a situation sometimes it is all full it is all full sorry and this is in and this is out so the thing is the only difference is you are not operating in a, a finite buffer size but the situation is all the same you need, still need to have the nr full nr empty the only change what you need in this part you don't have to take the mod of n and mod of n in both the sides in plus 1 and out plus 1 is good enough out plus plus in plus plus there is no need to uh, apply the mod of n and to wrap it back to zero but still it is although it is a infinite buffer so the thing is the only thing is uh, interpretation is you don't reuse the plates that's all reuse the slots you basically throw it out but does it mean that you will not have the scenario of all the all the plates empty or all the plates full buffer size is full now hmm so buffer size is full so the chef will do what he will uh, keep giving out plates um and ca they can't be a full condition i don't understand how can be a full condition basically. okay i yes that is true if you if you have got infinite number of slots that are available then you are free to produce at any time yes sir. but the consumer can find that all are empty yes sir that is what i'm saying okay. means i don't number need to of... check okay so wh which one should i uh, do we need to shed off uh, the Sir, one nr full be checks nr empty nr empty or nr full which one um, nr full so sir whatever the p1 check the producers check internally that we need to shed off Now these the naming good. are very confusing nr empty and nr full no i mean i mean say will i shed off the red lights or the blue lights blue red lights red lights red lights because yes. they the producers in order to wait so they are waiting on the red light so the red light should be shed off and the blue light should be still be there because even though you have got enough space but you have not the chefs are not you know fast enough to produce so you have to still wait on the the consumers may still need to wait on the blue lights right yes sir so, and do you need to have the mute count may uh, mute p and mute c can you get rid of the mute p also Yes, can we get can, rid of the mute? We can hide in now. Hmm. 
all the producer all the chefs can come exactly at the same time there is no yes so, so they will start fighting with the out pointer uh, sorry the in pointer right so that is required so the the mute p is required but the nrmt can be removed is that fine yes sir so uh, this sleeping bar we don't have time uh, enough time to continue so i'll take uh, one class from 4 so i'll i'll talk about the sleeping bar bar problem from 4 pm to today okay instead of putting too much in the same class in a single class so if you have any questions you can think of it and we can take on the discussion in the next class so i am spending a bit of time here because you have you have to first understand the the basics of the semaphores when you apply to uh, solving the classical problems and you might have other options or uh, other ideas like why don't we give this and this like this so that also you have to be convinced uh, when you analyze the solutions so we'll sir, have some time uh, yes sir how about uh, we continue the class now uh, because then we'll have uh, time in the evening sir so uh, is it possible i don't know sir maybe we can poll uh, so i am having those slides there are just two two three slides but it will take some time because it's a it's a another classical problem so it will another it will take at least half an hour that is my point so are you ready for that so i can continue or i will continue from 4 so can you give us 15 minutes to discuss among us has to come break. to a consensus whether so there are three options now i continue right from the right from this moment i give a break for 15 15 minutes half an hour or i just come back at 4 pm so come to a consensus so we have a class from 3 uh, so can you finish within one hour then we can start from 2 yes that is possible as i mentioned because you see i i, I don't uh, i'll be just discussing about one more problem so that might take not more than 40 minutes maybe because i want to take some time while discussing it putting it in a hurry it's of no use so maybe 45 minutes at most one hour not more than that so you want to make it from 2 to 3 hello uh, sir we're discussing in the group sir can you give us 5 minutes yeah fine you let me know okay sir uh sir let's continue now sir hello yes so we we've decided to continue now sir now it's so a, we'll have uh, fine. Yes. fine so let me switch on that just give me 2 minutes time just 2 minutes i'm i'm just coming back i make a phone call and come back within 2 minutes okay let me meanwhile you can you can read the this slide the the uh, details of the sleeping barber problem and i'll continue just give me one or two minutes time
ओके हेलो यस ओके यस फाइन सो द नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम इज द स्लीपिंग बार बार प्रॉब्लम आई थिंक सम ऑफ यू हैव गॉन थ्रू दिस स्लाइड टू नो अबाउट द प्रॉब्लम इटसेल्फ सो ऑल इट सेज दैट देर इज अ सेलो वेयर देर इज वन बार बार हुई सर्विंग द कस्टमर्स एंड फॉर गिविंग हेयर कट सो देर इज वन कस्टमर हेयर कट चेयर and there are uh, in number of chairs to accommodate the waiting customer just a minute hello na shubhu bhai bolchi amar class ta ke ami ekটু extend korchi ho to minute chole 1 ghonta theke 40 minute hobe tar pore ami join korchi ha class ta arektu ami pore dano chatte class ta kora jabe na oder onno iye ache ami just ekটু pore dukchi যদি পারো তো আধ ঘন্টা বাদে করতে বলো নালে আমি আমি গিয়ে জয়েন করছি তো হাফ অ্যান আওয়ার দাঁড়াও না তুমি শুরু করো আমি যাচ্ছি ওকে সো देयर আর এন নাম্বার অফ চেয়ার্স ফর ওয়েটিং কাস্টমারস সো টোটাল হাউ মেনি কাস্টমারস ক্যান বি देयर ইনসাইড দা ইনসাইড দ্যাট শপ সেলুন n plus 1 n plus 1 can be there at a time okay so if n plus uh, more than n plus 1 customers arrive so they definitely they have to leave so they enter they check the status they find that okay there are more more persons inside so they have to leave because you cannot they cannot just uh, afford to just uh, i mean they simply cannot stand and wait for long okay so the barber is uh, very lazy or i mean he he has got nice arrangements to automate the whole system so that's why he never cares and he sleeps when there are no customers in the uh, in the shop and he sleeps in the in the same chair in the customer hair cut chair he occupies the chair and starts sleeping when there are no customers if a new customer comes to the salon and then he finds that uh, number of chairs available so find no chairs are available okay Uh, so no chairs available means all the n plus one customers are inside. If it finds that no chairs are available, he simply leaves. And either this is the action he takes, or if he enters and finds that the total number of customers inside is less than n plus one, then he updates the customer count. Okay. so to keep track of the number of customers there is a customer count so you say this is the count variable that is maintained in inside the cellon so it can be a digital counter it can be a small board in which a new person customer who comes he just mentions or notifies the number of persons inside so we'll see that how this can be maintained okay this can be a digital board or it can be a automated one or it can be a manual board which keeps track of the count of customers inside the shop so if he finds that he himself can be accommodated in some of the chairs either in the hair cutting chair or waiting customer chair he updates the count and if he finds that nobody is inside what is what is our action to be taken he updates the count and he finds nobody is there means he is the only person inside so the count will show it to be one now he will awaken the sleeping barber right and he will get the hair cut and if he finds that some customers are already inside that means after his update he finds the value to be greater than 1 so he is not the only person so even if there is one more person that person is definitely inside the barber's chamber right and getting a hair cut and if there are more number of customers in whatever is the case is if he finds that some customer is inside the new customer need to wait in one of the waiting chairs right we'll we'll draw a diagram through which we'll visualize the whole thing now when a customer finishes a hair cut so some customer so he finds that some customer is waiting in the waiting chair so he will do what he will do because he knows that the barber i mean in the shop the the basic protocol says the barber is 
always eager to sleep because uh, he never cares who is waiting so it is the responsibility of the customers to alert him to get a haircut that's the first thing second thing is the waiting customers also there is no uh, you know no such entertainments that will uh, keep them uh, awake so uh, they will basically relax and they will sleep so uh, outgoing customer who has already got a haircut after finishing a haircut he just looks into that if somebody is waiting if somebody is waiting he will signal that person one of the first person in that uh, who is waiting inside in the waiting chairs and uh, if it is not the case he will he will just do nothing and will update the customer count update means in this case he will decrement the count and leaves the salon right and the barber when the barber is awakened by the customer he leaves the chair and gives a haircut to the customer that is the case and after giving the haircut he immediately again uh, goes back to the sleep mode i mean he he will just sit in that customer chair and will start relaxing so in between even if he gets a few minutes time in between two haircuts he will he will make sure that he is sleeping so the next customer comes from the uh, from the waiting pool and he will again need to alert the barber and he will give the haircut okay so the barber after giving the haircut again starts sleeping no matter even if somebody is waiting inside so can you visualize the whole scenario so, so the situation is something like this so here this is the view of the salon that the top view and this is for example the chair where the hair cutting is given so it's a pretty comfortable chair okay and this is the sitting area for the waiting customers so this is also very got very nice arrangement and this is you can think of here is a board which maintains a counter count so here is a board which maintains a count and, and this is the entry to the shop okay so what do you think how many semaphores or how many lights in in other words how many lights should be there to control the whole operation got the problem so initially what is what is happening when, in the starting of the salon in the early morning uh, when the shop is open uh, just opened then what the barber is doing the barber starts sleeping right and this count will be in that case the count will be zero in the early morning and the barber is sleeping so here are the customers who are coming okay they need to get a hair cut so these are the customers who who needs hair cut right so they are coming uh, and on entry what they need to check and manipulate or update this customer sir is the count so count is a critical resource right so this is a kind of resource which you and and what is the other resource that is critical here it's a hair cut chair right so this count is also critical so before you allow these say multiple customers to enter check update or they leave before you before they make the that operation what do you need they need to be the access to the count need to be protected by a semaphore so where should, should you need to place the place a bulb sir at the count board yeah in the entry here itself right in the entry here you 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 make a you make a provision for a bulb 
that will basically protect the access to this count variable okay count now who is going to update this count uh, incoming customer will update this count or i mean at least need to check that count and who else need to check this count do the barber need to check this count, uh, count anymore no sir because he he just sleeps if somebody pushes him and alerts him shouts he wakes up gives a haircut and sleeps he is so lazy because he is proud that his shop is having a very sophisticated arrangement and so he is quite happy with that and he never cares for what others are doing and the customers are well behaved and who else is actually uh, need to access the count who else is actually interested in checking the count a person who has got a very nice haircut okay who is about to leave so this incoming and the outgoing person they all need to get this so the thing is this bulb should be placed in such a way that this person this person all they can access get access to it so before they get access to it so what kind of uh, switch you should be having here before exit or before or before you enter what kind of switch on this what kind of switch p or v switch what you need p p switch right because generally this will be on this light will be on the entry light will be on and all and even for getting the hair cut hair cut also he can also switch it so p means you have to check if it is on you have to switch off and access the count variable and make updations if you are entering increment if you are exiting you decrement that's all right so you have to basically have p switches inside the salon also before you exit and outside the salon also before you enter is that fine is that okay yes so what what other uh, uh, semaphores need to be placed here what other semaphores need to be placed here so when you enter when you enter maybe that nobody is there or maybe one person is there so if a new customer enters when the light was glowing on a p operation on this finds that it was glowing on it will switch it off and it will enter here being in on entry what you will do you will basically check this count value if the count value is if the count value is equal to n plus 1 already so if you you will be it will be registered here so if you find that it is n plus 1 what you will do a new incoming customer sir so will leave. get out will get out but before he gets out what he will do he should basically operate a switch on it what kind of switch will be here what v kind switch. of switch will be here hmm a v switch because he leaves but he will allow other customers also to enter and verify what is going there because right so he should switch it on before he leaves and that is the, through the v switch he can do that right is that fine hello is that okay so if a customer enters and find it is n plus 1 so he need to leave but before he leaves he should switch it on so meanwhile before the hair cut is complete and anybody else enters from here because it is n plus 1 means one here and n here so it is completely full so if other some other customer comes he should be also allowed to enter inside and find it is n plus 1 he will leave other comes enters and leave so this allowance of entry to the salon and to check this count should be given that's why the v switch should be there even if you are leaving you should press the v switch right is that okay hello and this customer after getting the hair cut also when he is about to leave he so he never cares for any value so he simply decrements this counter he decrements the counter and he leaves but before he leaves because he has switched it off before he updates it using the p switch before he leaves he should press the v switch and leave is that fine hello yes. 
Yes, sir. So now, now the critical case. Now, like this one person is getting a haircut here. Okay, so one one customer is already getting a haircut, busy in getting a haircut, and a new customer comes by pressing. So by the time the light was glowing, probably he put it off. Found that this value of n is less than n plus one. That means he has got some chance to be inside either here or here. He, he never knows. So now what he will do first? What is the logic? First of all, he will check that whether. So definitely, if it is less than n plus one, the first thing that he should do make sure that he is in. He knows that I am in inside. I will be inside. So before he is inside, what he should do first? So there are two two ways. Either he can get to this path, or he can get to this path, right? If he is inside. So before he takes any of these two paths, what is the first thing that he should do? So turn on the light. Turn turn on which light? This light, this. entry light, yes. because he should allow others. He is inside. Maybe some other somebody else also will be able to um, sit inside. So he should like switch it on. And now he will check. So the thing is, this is irrespective of what whether he goes here or here, he will switch on the light. But whether he will go here or here, what is the condition now? He will check that if the count is equal to, he has already incremented now. If the count is equal to one, that means which path he will follow? So to the chair. To the chair. Now to the chair, what he finds? The barber is already sleeping. Sleeping means you can think of that it is. Uh, so there is some process which is in the sofa, relaxing, something like that. So what you can do here, he should operate on. He should operate. On another, uh, you should operate on another, uh, say, light here. So what is this light? This light is the this this is another semaphore. Let us call it as mute here cut. Okay, is is this visible? Mute here cut. So this this very uh, I mean this light will definitely will be off because. The barber is sleeping here. So if he enters through this path, what is the first thing he should do? What is the first thing he should do here? What kind should of operation? Turn on the light. Huh, so what is the operation? P or V? P. No, no. Switching on the light. It's switching light. on means what? You are incrementing. You are it's making the resource available. So it is. It is a V operation, right? Is that fine? It's a V operation that you perform. And who is going to perform the P operation on this light? Who is going to perform the P operation on this light? The barber. The barber himself, right? Whenever he wants to sleep. Sir, can you clarify so, between this P and V operation once, sir? In this context. Yes, sir, that's very confusing, sir. P yes, and V. Yes, sir. Okay, so which one confuses you? This uh, last one, the yellow P and V. Say in general, what is general, yes, P sir. and V? See the P. If you can recall the previous slides, what is the significance of P? So P is basically associated with weight. So the other uh, interpretation of P is it is for meant for waiting, checking and waiting, right? Is that fine? You see this this P, this P is associated with this weight. Weight means what? You are checking the status of the light. You are checking the status of the light. If it is on, you make it off. And if it is not on, you simply uh, get suspended or sit and relax. Is that okay? Is that fine? Can you recall this? So P is equivalent to the test and wait. I mean, you basically check and wait if required. So through the P operation, you basically can check the status of the light if it is glowing or not. If it is glowing, means what? That the resource is available for you. So if that happens, then you basically make it off. You switch off the light. Means what? You stop others to also access the same resource unit. But if it is already off, if this is false, if it is already off, then you have no other option but to wait in the sofa. Or you get suspended as a process. That is the significance of P operation. 
What is the semaphore? Semaphore is, is this one, light and sofa or this variable S. So this the semaphore, so this S is that NRMT or NR full or mute XP or mute XC, whatever. So if I operate, if I perform a P operation on that, on any semaphore, it is basically we are trying to check the status of the light you can say associated with that semaphore or value of the integer variable associated with the semaphore and we are trying to set it to zero if it is one if it is already on otherwise we occupy the sofa or we get suspended is that is that okay the p operation yes sir and the v operation what it does once you have used the resource now you are leaving so when you are or you are trying to release the resource so releasing the resource means what you would expect releasing the resource if nobody is waiting you should glow the light okay if sofa is empty nobody is waiting then you should glow the light means signify that now the resource is once again available for others to use but if somebody is already waiting instead of doing that you can better alert that person because that person will be sleeping now so that is what it means so the signal is basically the v operation so v operation is signaling it is basically switching on the light but switching on may not be physically switching on the light rather it may be alerting somebody who is waiting either if if it is if nobody is waiting it will switch it on if it somebody is uh, waiting instead of switching on it will alert that person that is the v operation okay in other words it is setting this value to 1 or alerting or deleting somebody from the queue in case of by general semaphore it is just decrementing the value during the p similar to the switching off one light and incrementing the value that is switching on one more light so that's why each time i say that p operation is associated with off switching off one or one light among a pool of lights or one particular light and v operation is equivalent to switching it on and this is i mean definitely is associated with the sofa operation also is that is that okay is the doubt cleared or you have still the doubt hello sir now the person if it comes and he, he sees that he is the first person there Hmm. So V V is in sense that he is trying to wake up the barber. Yes, see in this case what happens the barber always sleeps. So sleeps means he is basically occupying the sofa. So the, what is the operation? What is the first operation that the barber performs? The barber process. What is the operation he performs? How can you sit in a sofa? How can you sit and relax? What is the operation for that? So suspending itself, sir. Yes, so that is a P operation. So that's why what, what I say here is corresponding to this particular semaphore, which is associated with this particular chair. So this is a sofa here, this is a light here, sofa and light. This is a semaphore in the barber's chamber. So who is going to switch it off? So the barber himself will switch it off and he will occupy the chair here. And that is the initial state of the shop, of the saloon. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Now, when the first customer enters here and finds that he is the only customer after updating, it is one. So he enters here. So it is his task. What his task is to signal this barber so that he should leave the chairs like this. So he should. Okay, so he should he should leave the chair. Uh, I mean, and give a haircut. So how to alert that person? How to alert the person? You should bell the ring. So pressing this V means what? Pressing the V means in this case what will happen? Because somebody is waiting here. So instead of growing the light, what is going to happen? This barber will be awakened. So in this case, uh, essentially, 
you will not find that the light will be on at any point of time. It's basically the B operation is meant for awakening the barber and whenever he has done, he has given up haircut, he will press the P button and he will get into the sleep mode. He will be suspended. Is that okay? Or you still have some doubt in this point? Hello? V is yes, to sir. alert the barber who is waiting in the in that particular chair. Is that fine? Or yes, sir. So now you see that the the last case that is the customer enters here, finds the count to be greater than one. Definitely it is less than in n plus one. That's why he's still in. But he finds that this is greater than one. Greater than one means he is not the first person. He's the might be second, third, or fourth person. So he should be waiting here. So to allow him to sit here, what should you need to what do you need to have? You need to have one, one more semaphore here, right? So you need to have one more semaphore here. Or one more light here. Okay. So this light, if this is if this light is on. If this light is on, that means what? This light on means you can uh, switch on, the, switch off the light, and you can directly enter here. If this light is off, means what? You have to wait in this sofa, and you have to take your turn. Okay, but this can accommodate not more than n number of processes. The way this count is updated and maintained. So we have got this blue uh, blue semaphore, this black semaphore, and the yellow semaphore. So if we call it as mute here cut, if we call this as mute wait, this one as mute wait, and this one as mute p, or uh, this I have mentioned as uh, mute count cnt. So these are the three semaphores. One is this, the first semaphore, and another this one, and the third semaphore. Is the arrangement clear to you? Is the arrangement clear to you? The arrangement of the semaphores inside the shop? Hello? Do you have any queries or any other opinions? Sir, isn't black semaphore uh, redundant? Uh, we are checking count any anyway. So. See, count you are checking, but uh, if you find that somebody is already inside taking the hair cut, so you should be waiting. So where you should be waiting? You should be waiting in some other sofa, right? Is that sofa same as this one? No. So you should be. So the thing is, this black is associated with this black sofa. You can think of this for the waiting processes. Who are inside but waiting for the here their turn to come. Okay, sir. If you don't have this, so you cannot make them wait. How? What? What they will do then? And this is not you. You can't define an explicit queue. So this is an arrangement. So this is this black is an arrangement. It is one semaphore. This uh, yellow with this. So I should have made it yellow. So this yellow is another arrangement, and this blue is another arrangement. Okay. So you have got a sofa here and here. So maybe uh, you have got the. So this sofa is somewhere here. So where the outgoing process, uh, outgoing customer is also waiting, and the incoming customer is also waiting. Okay. You have got provisions to sit. So this is one arrangement. This is another arrangement, and this is another arrangement. Is that fine? Yes, sir. So who is going to operate this uh, on and off in this in this black semaphore? Who is going to switch it? Uh, I mean, who will perform the P operation on this? Tell me. Who is going to perform the P operation on this? 
whenever a process finds that it should be inside right so it should operate on this and either will be waiting here or it will be inside right so there should be a so there should be a p operation on it and who should perform the v operation on this on this black semaphore who should be signaling it so the one who gets the haircut after getting the haircut right so this will be the so there should be some wires coming which will be v on this so a exiting customer will operate on this so let's try to write the code for, for this okay so the customer say the ieth customer so all customers will follow the same logic so what it will do he wants to enter what should write first what operation so p operation on count e p of what what is the semaphore m u t count sir is that fine others uh, other students so what next now if he if he comes here that means what that means he found it to be glowing and he switched it off and he is inside so being inside what is the first step that he makes first checking what he makes if so if count is equal to n plus count is equal to without any change he just checks if it is n plus 1 if it is n plus 1 what he does he need to leave before he leaves what he does v operation sir v of right is that fine and he exits because there is no way he can proceed further right so he is basically found the salon is full and he leaves okay so what next if this is not the case that means he entered here he finds that it is not equal to n plus 1 then the immediate uh, action that he can take is what this is check if he is the first customer sir no 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 first you have to first to increment oh increase in any case you know that you are inside right count plus plus first he updates now what he does after updation what he does now he checks if check, sir if he is the only person so how to check it if count is if count is one first of all you check that if he is not the only person if count is greater than one that means he is not the only person he is he is uh, not the only person so if he is not the only person so that person might be uh, getting a haircut or other persons might be waiting so that is the situation so if this is the case what he should do first here so he should follow either this path or this path now so before he does that what he makes sure he switches this signal on he presses a v on this blue right hello yes sir before he enters he should press so the mute count he should press now once he is here means what now he is about to operate on this black so what is the first step on black p mute to it so p off i i would rather say p no mute to it no mute uh, p mute no it because so p no mute to it so if he is here means what if he if he is here means what he has executed the p operation on this but he finds that it was glowing if it was glowing means what that means he need not have to wait here he can take this path is that okay and if he gets stuck here means he has occupied the sofa black sofa is that fine hello so if he is here that means he need 
he don't have to wait see he is now free to go here so what is the next step now he should be operating on this what is the next step so should... the count is greater than 1 yes the count is greater than 1 but the greater than 1 so this count so if if it is greater than 1 so in this case what will happen if this is greater than 1 will we be able to skip this part because the first customer when he entered he has operated this p operation and what is the significance of the p operation if this was glowing it has been switched off right and that's why he was here so if he is the second person then this will remain off and he need to occupy the seat here so that person so if he is the second person or third person he will find that he will be waiting here are you getting my point sir like test and wait yes even i mean if you were the second person then this p operation would, would not have you, you could not have skipped this this operation that means you have found this light was off when the first person first customer entered he has operated the p operation here and that p operation has made it off so if the second person comes again performs a p operation he will just have to wait here that is what it says so we'll find the light is off if light is off occupy the sofa so he will get stuck here itself is that clear yes sir so when the so when a, a process can execute this view operation what will be the view operation now so this view operation means either you you are waiting in the sofa and the one who was getting the hair cut has alerted you through the v so instead of switching on the light he has press the bell so you are alerted or you find that you are the only person who did not have to wait here and comes directly to so this view operation means what this view operation i am talking about so view of what you have to do view of what is this mute hair cut sir mute hair cut so once you are awakened the once you have awakened the barber then the barber uh, you basically gets uh, get a hair cut right so you basically get hair cut next what after getting the hair cut you are about to leave so signal the other person then decrease the count Yes. What is the first thing that you do? First, you signal whom? Sir, we of this mute. Wait, no wait. No wait. But before you do that, you basically it's better you uh, because uh, you first make sure that you you lock this counter because you stop others to enter now. Okay. So first thing is once you have done, you 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 first stop this. You first get a P operation onto this, and you grab this area. first you grab this area then you make the changes so that when you are about to leave before you make these changes here you make sure that no other person enters here so what you do you basically make a p of p of what mute count so you basically check the status of this light if it was on you switch it off and try to work on this counter and what you do count minus minus because in any way you are going to leave but now before you leave you can press the this v switch okay so now you can make v mute no wait so this anybody who is waiting in the black sofa will be alerted if nobody is waiting this light will glow on so that means nobody is waiting you are the only person who got the hair cut you are about to leave you make this light on so the next person when it comes it will update this counter to one and it will find if it performs a p operation here it will switch off the light and it will simply go here is that fine hello sir hello hello yes uh, sir if count is 
like count is one sorry hmm. hello yes uh, why shouldn't we perform v mute count i mean when count is one hmm. now are you talking about uh, while why you are entering the now are you talking about when you are entering as yes. a customer or when you are leaving when we are entering as a first customer yes count is one after we increment it after we increment now, count is one ha huh, then so now we want uh, perform we mute count no sir count is greater than one we mute count we want perform this when count is one no sir okay so that will be skipped so light will be off no no it it need to be performed so yeah this is conditional no sorry yes this need to be performed in any case so this is to be performed when this is one or greater than one because you have to switch on this light so that you allow others to enter yes then after doing that you perform this p operation here if it is glowing you switch off and enter here if it was off you just sit here so no matter what the value of the count is if it is one or greater than one you have to basically switch on the entry light for others to access the count variable and after that you per perform the p operation here on the no mute mute no it and accordingly you take this path or you take this path is that okay or yes that was a mistake that i made hello so what is the last statement that we have so while we are exiting you have updated the count first of all you get the lock on this you have switched it off you have decremented the count here switched it off and decremented the count and then you have signaled this this semaphore also signaled either incremented or you know uh, basically you have alerted the person and now go to leave so when you leave what you do v off mute count you leave and switch it on is that fine is that fine is there any question regarding this part hello any queries regarding this part the customer part do you have any queries on that so if we come to the barbers part there is a single barber so just one barber will be executing the barber process is executing so whenever what is the first step that he performs he prefers to sit in the sofa and relax or sleep or get suspended so to get himself suspended what is the operation that he need to perform a p operation right on what particular semaphore the sofa is associated with this semaphore so this is mute here cut is that okay so that is the first step that he performs so it basically sleeps or relaxes so this is what he sleeps so who alerts this or who uh, makes him uh, again active who makes him active sir incoming customer, customer executing this v mute v mute count right Uh, v mute here count. Uh, v mute here cut. So if a customer comes at this point, executes v mute here here cut, so he gets alerted. 
So once he gets alerted, what is his task? Simple task is give haircut to a customer and collect, say, the amount. Once he is done with that, what he will do after giving the haircut? He again performs P on mute haircut and starts sleeping. So even in between two haircuts, consecutive haircuts, he will sleep for at least one second or maybe, I mean, for some amount of time. In between the switch over, he will sleep for a while. Is that okay? Hello? Yes, sir. So what are the shared semaphores? Semaphore. Shared semaphore. How many semaphores are used? Three semaphores. What kind mm -hmm. of semaphores these are? What kind of semaphores these are? This is mute count. This is mute here cut. And this is mute. Uh, no wait. What kind of semaphore? Binary or general? Do they take values more than one? No, sir. No, sir. You just have one light. You don't have a pool of lights. So they will be just taking values 0 and 1. Even in this case also, it will be 0 and 1. So what, what values they will be initialized to? Each of these three. Mute here count. This one. When the uh, In the early morning, this light should be switched. The entry to the shop should on. be on. On, sir. Mute here card, this one, it should be switched. On. It should be, it should be switched. Switched off, sir. Off. Off. Because it should be off and then, then the when the barber executes, it finds it off and that's why it slips. Okay. If you make it on, then it, the barber will start giving a haircut to himself. So that is not possible. Okay, and no, no uh, mute, no wait. This light should be glowing or off. On. It should be on, right? Okay, so this way uh, there can be any number of customers that can come. It will ensure that it will not not allowing it will not be allowing more than n plus one customers inside the saloon, and one will be then taking the haircut. Rest will be waiting. And in this, during this situation, if more customers are coming, they will just come, check the status and leave. That is how it works. So it's a sleeping barber case. There can be several variants of this. In a saloon, if you have got multiple barbers who are having, so there are multiple red shares to service the, uh, to serve the customers. So that is also possible. So those are some, some modifications of this. Otherwise, this is the, this is how it works. So this is a solution. Uh, so I think that mistake is still there also. So that's why I'll, I'll make this change. So do you have any questions on this? Any questions? So think of it because uh, well, for the first time when you deal with semaphores, uh, there will be uh, several doubts or questions that might arise. So if you, even if you have got some queries, you can ask me in the next class uh, where we discuss about the reader writer problem. That is also a classical problem and followed uh, by that, it will be the dining philosopher's problem. That is a simple one. So these two problems we will talk about and uh, in Monday we will talk about how to implement, uh, how to write codes on semaphores, how to create semaphores in a C, C code. What are the system calls for that? Because we have already created shared uh, shared memories. So how to create a shared variable, semaphore variable, and how to, what is the system call to uh, implement the P and V operations? That we will see. <coughs> so once that is done, I think the, the last topic will be the monitors, which will take care of the limitations of semaphores as a solution approach.
and there in the monitor will be again dealing with the same problem so the problems we don't have to state restate once again just we have to uh, derive the solution using monitors uh, trying to solve the same problems of sleeping bar bar reader writer and producer consumer so do you have any questions hello any questions hello sir hello hello yes i don't know sir is there any reason behind naming every semaphore with mute no no this is not there is no such reason it is just to because semaphores are meant for ensuring mutual exclusion right mutual exclusive access to the resource so this mute is standing for mutual uh, mutex something like that so that is why uh, but again there is no absolutely no reason you can just write anything. and mutex are typically binary semaphores so uh, mutual exclusion so that that is why we prefer to use the term instead of writing x y and z this this is these are no, just normal naming convention so you can always write anything that you want but how you create a semaphore how you create a shared resource and use it as a semaphore that is uh, we'll see <coughs> so it is not as easy as a shared semaphore and you, you write here mute x uh, mute p and it will be created so you have to write few steps like those uh, in case of you have to get that attach that and all this so that we will see later anything okay, else sir. No, sir. okay so may i leave